Hey everybody, the College Railroader here, and after I came back from the Amherst Model Railway Show, I was fortunate enough to get the Bachman BCC Sound Value PCC Trolley. Uh, it also has this fantastic spark plug over here that'll actually kind of flicker. Um, it's a really cool set. Uh, Bachman actually recently just posted a video uh, kind of reintroducing this trolley about four, five months ago. Um, so the train has been, it, it's a little old, but um, Bachman still made new videos about it. People were posting about it. So I found it. I really wanted to get it. It was also on sale too. So it was kind of worth the buy. Um, so let's kind of open it. Let's do an unboxing and let's get this thing opened. Follow me. So of course, you know, upon opening it, it has all the standard, um, you know, sayings on it. The, the trolley is equipped with the DCC layout. It has the motor, has the sound, has the die cast chassis, the easy make couplers. Um, it, it's just regular wording that's on here. It's kind of for everything. There's nothing special about it. Um, once though, of course, when we open it, this is of course the HOPCC streetcar, the Philadelphia Transit. Ooh, okay, okay. So you already see the kind of the pole right here, but let me just quickly see the start guide on here, right? So regular thing. For DCC sound, if I open it, you know, right here it talks about, you know, for a steam train, for a diesel. Um, the user guide, the feature. Nothing about the trolley itself and what it can do. That's that's quite interesting. Um, one more, two. Yeah, I don't see anything regarding what the trolley can do. Is there anything? Nope, see, see this is 2016. All right, you can tell that this is, again, an older train, but Bachman kind of reintroduced it. This is just the paperwork. Um, okay, so this revealing this just has the parts in it. And nope. Hmm. Okay. Um, well, I guess it's going to be a learning curve for all of us, so I can try to see the different um, things that it has. That, that's kind of sad that Bachman didn't give it specific, specific instructions because I don't really know what the buttons do. Um, and this doesn't move. You can see the light. It's lights right there, that tiny little yellow piece. Wow. Um, it feels very lightweight. Um, I know the older PCC trolleys that I used to have were, you know, made of completely metal. So, you know, this of course being having that plastic shell, of course, is a lot of lightweight. You can see the pickup on both sides, the speaker underneath, not bad. The detail on the sides, not that bad. Obviously, of course, the doors are not going to open. Um, it looks like that there's a light on both sides. Um, so we'll kind of see how it goes. Um, but yeah, let's put it on the track. Okay, so I finally have the trolley all set up. I'm finally gonna plug in my easy command. And so nothing's happening, of course, and you know, that's regular. So. I already assigned it to number two. It took me a very long time to do it. Um, I'm not quite sure why. I think just the decoder wasn't paying attention to me or because I had, I um, tried to program it in incorrectly. So fortunately for anybody who has any um, problems with their DCC trains, please check out my video where I reviewed this set because I was able to fill out literally any um, questions and answers or any frequently asked questions of how to program a specific train, whether it's Bachman, a different non-Bachman, ones that are completely new to having a decoder inside them, any problem. I even had, I've had to watch some of my older videos and take a mini crash course again to make sure I program them correctly. And fortunately, like for this one, I had to take that mini class and detour, but fortunately, it was great and I was able to do fine. So I'm very happy about that. But anyway, so like I said, it's already on number two and if I just turn it very slightly, already starts to crawl. Now, as you can tell, you know, it's not making any sound. It's actually what I found out after looking up a separate um, review of what Bachman had did for this train. That way I kind of knew some of the buttons already. So if you press number five, You have its motor come on. If I press the number 10 button, the light will come on, but there's also a light in the back, which, let me take out which in the back, the two little end lamps. See, look, if I flick the button, you can tell that it lights up. 
um, super, super well detailed with the people inside, with the lights on on both sides. Really cool idea. And you can just hear the thing purr. Very impressive. Anyway, so we have the lights on. That's so cool. Number one is the bell. And you can actually keep pressing it as many times as you want. So, right? It's, it's very sensitive, um, which is kind of nice. So if someone rings it or you want to do a one bell to stop or two bells to go, it doesn't really matter. Number two is actually a, a stop request. So if a passenger's on and they want to get off a specific area, they would press this button. That faint little doot sound if you listen again. And that one, you can't spam the button, so it does take a little time to almost make the sound. Like that. Number three is uh, the door sound effects when you open and close it. Though, of course, the doors will not move, but we'll pretend that the doors are opening when I press the sound. And now I'm going to close the door. Mm -hmm. Okay. So number four actually turns on the spark plug light. It's already on, so as the train's driving, you'll see it. Um, it's very impressive. Actually, here, if I just put my finger down, I'm going to let the tip of the train go, and it'll make a sound, so l let's listen. I'll turn the button on just in case. Oh, did you see it? Look at it again. It does it at random intervals, so it's really impressive. And it's super bright. So I'm going to turn off the lights. I'm going to hold the train so you'll see all the lights on and even when it's going on. So I have all my lights turned off and it makes this nice yellow hue. Again, my camera makes it seem like it's brighter than it is, um, but it's a great job. So I'm going to put my finger out and hold on to the train so you can see how bright this spark plug is. Even going this slow, you'll see it. Again, it takes some time because it's random, so we'll see it again. Oh, look at that. And it makes the sound effect, too, which is so impressive. Here, one more time. Oh, all right. So enough of me holding this train. Let's see this thing in action around the layout. So this is such a very impressive model. Um, this was only, I want to say you can find it for around $120, $100. I wouldn't pay more than $130, honestly. Um, again, uh, it was originally $100 when I, sorry, it was $120. Um, when I went to the train show, it was 20% off. So it was only $100 plus the sales tax. Um, I know, for example, Train World, they sell it for exactly $100, uh, and then, you know, plus the fees. So you're looking around like the same price of $120. Um, the specific models though, are also very different. I believe this is the most expensive one, the Philadelphia one, whereas like the New Jersey Transit, for example, the Chicago, I think they're $10 cheaper, which I find um, odd. That's just a marketing thing. I don't, I'm not sure. I'm not an economist for Bachman, <laughs> so I'm not quite sure why one's higher than the other. Um, I love the added light fixture on top. I think to me that's what sells it. Um, if it if it didn't have it, I wouldn't really spend that much. It's cool that it has lights, um, but you know I know MTH they have their fantastic uh, subway that I uh, fortunately are very lucky to own, um, and that you hear like people like talking and chattering and making noise. Someone's coughing. Someone's shouting hot dogs. 
um, there's more uh, there's more life in that train. For this one, it's great that you know you have the bell and um, the doors opening, but I would have wanted more sound or some announcer talking. You know, the next stop will be blank or just whatever. You know, next stop approaching or station coming through, whatever. Something like that would have added more to it. But with the light fixture on top because it's added to it and you hear the the crackling effect i think it's worth it especially when we had it you know when it's like the night the layout at night sometimes having the trains go on at night versus in the daytime when you're in a layout is so different and so i think having a late night trolley run with the loud with the bright effect is really something cool and different you know as you can see you know i have this five foot by five foot you know, train table, but you really don't need all of that, of course. You know, this trolley works great with just, um, you know, a 15 inch radius, an 18 inch, even just a curve, or you don't even need to. The trolley's built just to go side to side. Um, I know I only showed it going in one direction because of the prong, um, but, you know, in retrospect, does it really matter? No, a little bit. You know, you could have this go on a separate layout. Um, I know for us, when I go, when I bring this to the train room, um, we have a section so that's kind of above the rest of the layout, so trains kind of go through it. Um, and we want the, the trolley just to go back and forth, or if it can do a small loop, you know, if it can do a 15-inch radius, it's it's perfect, it's fine, that's all that I needed to do. So having it on this large layout, really just to get the nice detail of having the train go slowly through, slowly through this grass field. Um, you can tell I'm excited for this train, I keep talking faster than I need to. It's just really cool. I like the detail. Um, you know, I wish the middle part, I wish the whole part of the trolley lit up instead of just the two ends. I know, of course, that's where the motor and the decoder is. So I can't, you know, I can't fault it too much on Bachman's part. Um, again, this was $100. I think it's a well worth price, I do, compared to other trains where some I think are worth a lot more than they need to be. Um, so for just a small little trolley on just a simple circle, again, for if you're, if you're starting out as for a model railroad fan, I think having a trolley at first with some buildings are great. A little something small at first and then slowly you expand it as you get older or when you have more finances to do it. Um, but for some of our more experienced listeners on here, um, it's perfect for a city in and out back and forth or having it do a little circle or a loop if your layout has the capacity and space to do so. Um, but it's just a great uh, system, I like it. I like that Bachman again uh, reintroduced it. Um, I wouldn't have known about this trolley um, if it wasn't for one of the latest videos, like I said, that came out four or five months ago. So at least good on them for their advertising for me to see it. And again, I know Bachman kind of had a our train world had a resurgence and they had newer ones to come out. So it was just really cool that um, I was fortunate to kind of be ahead of the curve and I saw this. It was kind of more or less new, I'll say. So I'm very happy that I found it. I got it. The light is incredible. Um, the system and sounds it makes are fantastic. It's only $100. I think it's worth it. Um, and if you can get it cheaper, talk to some of your local hobby stores. Maybe they can cut you a deal. Who knows? <laughs> but just like that, we're on the right track. I'll see you real soon when we come back. Thank you so much for watching The College Railroader today. Be sure to be on the lookout for more videos to come. Take care, everybody.